and that basically he believed the SEC was covering up for Madoff. Uh, the media spins that and says that they were just dumb or that he's saying they were fools. No, I watched the testimony. He's saying they're involved, and now they've declared national security. What's that sound like to you, Bob Chapman, the international forecaster? A uh, giant cover-up. Same-o, same-o. The last guy in there, he was bad. This one's just as bad. And, you know, we're just not going to get to the bottom of anything. It's like Congress, uh, the ones who aren't compromised to bought off and get about 50 guys and gals in there who do the right thing, and that's it. And we just have no place to go. It, it is the way I said it was several weeks ago, and there's a whole bunch of people involved, and uh, it, nothing's going to come out. It, it is one of the great, and, and the figure's not 50, it's 100 billion. Oh, and now they've indicted him. So we know what the SEC does. They go around harassing people that try to tell the truth. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, they have been, they were harassing me since 1967, uh, trying to put me out of business as a stockbroker. I mean, I went through the middle of Hades for years. I perpetually had three sets of auditors in my office trying to find some way to bag me. And then later when they couldn't find anything, they, they started to threaten me. You know, if you don't cooperate, you're going to have a serious problem, this sort of thing. Yeah, you told and me then off. I got calls about, you know, if you keep it up, you ain't going to be around. You told me you had a White House official tell you, just give us money. Yes, that's true. So that's absolutely true. So, so the bureaucracy is there to go after real businesses, mainline people playing by the rules. The big boys are immune. Uh, beyond. Two sets of juris, uh, jurisprudence. One for them and one for us. They had a few clips of him, you know, making it look like the SEC were just buffoons. When really they're there to make sure real legitimate business doesn't go on, that everything is consolidated in the hands of the crime syndicate. Bob Chapman's our guest. That's right. Can you imagine that fellow trying for almost 10 years to get the SEC to act? I've been writing about the SEC for 35, 40 years and how they protect Wall Street. That's what it's all about. They're not to protect the average investor. These people are as criminal as the people that we have in jails. You know, one of the things I've been doing is buying transcripts of current SEC trials, just so I can read them. Because in my anecdotal, and they're fun, you know. <laughs> I seriously do. The sense I get is it's just arrogance. Mary Shapiro doesn't give a Right? I mean, look, it's not like she's saying, here we go, here's the strategy, here's the steps we're taking to make the markets more efficient, capital formation better, more trust in the markets. There's none of that. When you get accused of this, it isn't just about the money, it isn't just the fight. It's about your family, trying to explain to your kids. I mean, literally, when I stood up, knowing that they were going, the jury was going to deliberate, I had to go through my mind, what if I lose? What am I going to tell my kids? What am I going to tell the people I work with? You know, what's going to happen? During those eight years when I was fighting it, the waking up in the middle of the night, sending emails, doing searches, looking for things, trying to, you know, find more information, it just consumes you when the, when the government is fighting you unjustly. There's no point in SEC enforcement. If the biggest IPO in the history, you can't say wait, no wait, to. Wait, wait. Can I push back on you, though, Mark? Sure. I mean, you bought into this thing. Oh, I mean, yeah, you're, you're supporting it as well. I mean, you're, you're saying the SEC should have turned it away, and yet you are there as a shareholder giving think, your money to Alibaba and Jack Because I think Ma. the SEC is worthless in the first place, right, when it comes to enforcement. Oh. Seriously, that's my perspective. So I do it because I don't trust the uncertainties, and I don't trust that the SEC is taking the right steps. You come to this agency, treat it like a business, what would you do? Um, you'd have to burn it down and start from the beginning. <laughs> Is this nothing salvageable about the SEC? When, I'm not saying it's not salvageable. I'd say in a perfect world that's a good idea. I just don't think it's possible. Well, to what you could do is raise the SEC. No, and but what over. you could. And the SEC, which is part of Wall Street, is totally corrupt and has been ever since Joe Kennedy was the first commissioner of the SEC's first chairman in the SEC. Most people don't know that. They figured, you know, we'll put the fox in charge of the hen house and nobody will be able to get away with anything because he knows all the tricks. Well, that lasted a few years and Joe quit and went back to his brokerage firm. And unfortunately, in 1936, there was a big scandal about Joe Kennedy 
shorting the market again on inside information. And his partner was dying, so his partner took the rap. Well, moving on, it is a shocking story to say the least that surfaced yesterday as the nation was in the midst of a financial meltdown in 2008. Employees at the Securities and Exchange Commission, who were supposed to be the watchdogs in all of this, were surfing for pornography while on the clock at the agency, some for as much as eight hours a day. Uh, their inspector general's investigation lasted five years, found 33 employees that violated commission rules and policies. Senator Chuck Grassley, who requested the memo that made all of this public, uh, is on the phone with us right now. Senator, uh, how in the world could something like this have happened? This is almost like uh, you couldn't make it up. This isn't the first time I've run into this in the federal bureaucracy. A few years ago at the National Institute of Health, and you know what I think it boils down to? Supervisors aren't supervising, but in this case, it appears that some of the people that are doing it are the supervisors. But uh, there is uh, a serious waste of taxpayers' money, serious uh, waste of time that could be better spent on what they're hired to do. And uh, it, it's just simply, if people want to do unethical, and as far as I'm concerned, even immoral things, they ought to do it on their own time and not the taxpayers' time. Well, I, and I take your point about supervisors, but even supervisors have supervisors. And the question I had as I read this is that uh, some of these people for up to eight hours were downloading pornography. <clears throat> it seems to me that somewhere along the way, uh, that guy's boss would have noticed he wasn't doing anything. And uh, that's the astonishing part, that this could go on and, and people just uh, apparently didn't even notice. Well, it's part of the culture of a lot of bureaucracies to, to not uh, push to get jobs done, to make sure that the taxpayers' money are spent wisely, and, uh, and changing the, uh, the environment in some of these uh, agencies is very, very difficult. That's a question. Do we start with hear no evil, see no evil, or do no evil? Take your pick. I only have five minutes. Someone uh, better let, start. Let me start with enforcement. As I said, we did an investigation in, we began an investigation in 2006, and it was closed without action. Why it's, was it closed without action? What did you investigate? What methodology did you use? And if you, if in the interest Were you of, suspicious when a guy had a one-man accounting firm investigating a, a $50 billion empire and you keep saying alleged alleged this guy confessed on national television you might have noticed and as I said our objective is to actually hold him accountable in a court of law bearing you our missed your chance we have we have a pending action pending in the southern district of New York you took action after the guy confessed he turned himself in don't give yourself any pat on the back for that and congressman every time why we... didn't you find him is the question I understand your question, and we cannot answer as to the specifics. I can talk generally. You know, if anybody made the case better than Mr. Marco Polos, and I didn't think anybody could, about you people being completely inept, you've made the case better than him. Well, sir, I, I, I am sorry you feel that way profoundly. Uh, we I think I'm reflecting what the American public feels. How are they supposed to have confidence that if somebody goes to you with a complaint, gives it to you on a silver platter, with all of the investigation, with all of the numbers, with all of the data, telling you exactly what he did, how he did it, and why he did it, and how he knows that, and after a period of a half a dozen or, or eight years, you don't know anything. I can only talk about what we, di what we do overall. No, no, we want to know specifically. I don't know what your general purpose in life is. I don't need you to come here to tell me that you hate fraud. Hate when that happens, don't you? But you're supposed to find it out before it happens. In enforcement, obviously, we can't, and I understand that concern. In enforcement, we bring, last year we brought 670 some odd cases. In the past two years, we brought 70 cases involving Ponzi schemes. In those 70 cases, all close listen, to Listen, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you have medals and, and, and ribbons and, no, and, and stuff like that, and congratulations on all the good stuff that you've done. I don't want to belittle any of that. But this is huge. How do you miss that? 
And, and, and we know that there are mini Madoffs out there. They're starting to surface. You, you missed all of those, too. We're but this one, this one you were pointed at. And, and, and Mr. Marco Polo says he's going to give you another one tomorrow. He's not even giving it to you. He's giving it out to someone else because nobody has confidence in you guys anymore. Maybe, maybe the general counsel, Mr. Vollmer, uh, I believe you were the one who thought that your people didn't have to testify here today. I, I don't know how, where you got that, but some of us think otherwise. Maybe, maybe you could tell us. How, how did they miss all this? We're as committed as each of you. That's to... not the question. Perhaps, we give you credit for being committed. Perhaps you could let me answer. Perhaps you can try to answer. And what, we, what we're asking... Is... No, no, we're asking. You have to tell us things. You're, you're forgetting what, the, what this procedure is. You're coming let's here to let, ask. We're asking you. How did you screw up? General's process work. It's a process Congress set up to identify the facts that we all need to make these judgments. Let's let the system work that Congress created. There will be some recommendations. There will be time for this committee to look at the facts and to think of the recommendations themselves. Tell that and to that's people who've the lost their whole lives that they have time. In this people don't have now, time. We need you to tell us something instead of lecturing us, Mr. Bulmer. Law enforcement proceedings going on. There are personal rights at stake. There are the in, there's the integrity of the investigation. We wouldn't be in this protect. mess if you people did and your that's job. That's why we've asked the committee. No, we're asking you. We are asking you to allow them to proceed. Could you cite whatever authority you're, you're citing and have cited? I, I'd be delighted. I'd be happy to do that. I'd be happy to talk. Because you have a right your, not to answer our questions under the Constitution's Fifth Amendment procedure. I'm not a lawyer. I'm, I'm a citizen, though. To your I'm a frustrated citizen. Happy to give the, the references to you or to your lawyer. I'm listening. Give us the references. Uh, there's. Um, a very important uh, opinion from uh, Attorney General Robert Jackson in 1941, where he explained the need to discharge the constitutional and statutory obligations of the executive branch in connection with law enforcement and civil litigation. Are you citing executive branch immunity, Mr. Bulmer? In response to requests for information from the Congress. Are you citing executive branch immunity, Mr. Vollmer? There's, there are various protections. Are you that... citing executive branch privilege, Mr. Vollmer? Uh, I would like to let you allow me to answer your question. Well, that's a yes or no question. It's a yes or no question, sir. Either you are no. or you are not. No, it's not. There are a variety of reasons and privileges and protections. They, one of them is executive branch protections. There's a deliberative process protection. They stem from the same design you have, and we're asking that you allow those processes to work. We are out of patience, and the question, obviously, is a yes or no question. Either you're citing executive privilege, immunity, or you're not doing that. I, I just explained there are... You know, if you're citing your Fifth Amendment privilege, you don't make a speech. And that's one of them, was the executive you are uh, was that a yes you're citing executive privilege in immunity part, it is yes I'm sorry I said yes it is in part has, have you inquired of the Justice Department